Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back again. So, today we will discuss uh, that uh, demand curve and supply curve shifts we have already introduced in our last lecture. So, today we will discuss that uh, to what extent those shifting or change in demand, change in quantity demand that those are happening. So, we will try to quantify those things by, by using the concept of elasticity. Okay. Before that, we have introduced that when demand curves uh, shifts rightward, leftward or supply curve shift right, rightward, leftward okay, with certain, certain uh, for certain factors that are other than the two variables what we are measuring in the, in the, uh, in our, in our diagram. Say for instance, in our diagram say suppose, say we are measuring as usual quantity demanded this side and price that side, right. And suppose this is the demand curve for one customer. Okay. Now, if that customer's under the satellite's periverse condition, if that customer's income only increases, what will happen? Perhaps his demand curve will shift outward. As I clarified earlier, this shift may not be parallel, may be parallel also. Okay. But some shifting will be in the right hand side. So, say suppose D1 was the earlier demand curve. D2 is the later demand curve. It's a shift due to income has increased of that customers under the satellite's previous condition. While, in other words, only income has increased, while all other factors, all other associated factors, those may have some influence, some implication on quantity demanded or demand behavior of that person, does not change. Right. So, how we can we can think of that way, or how we can uh, we can we can try to understand that okay at every say earlier suppose this is the price level O say P1 at that that price level earlier he or she was asking uh, this much of quantity demanded by him or her. Now due to expand of income under the satellite's previous condition the same customer is demanding this much of commodity in the market right. We can we can understand this from the other side also from this kind of thing, right. To get this much of quantity say Q 1, O Q 1 of quantity this much, O Q 1 of quantity earlier that customer was ready to pay this much of price, right. Now, the same customer is ready to pay little bit above price this much price, because he has more income now, he has more money in his hand to spend against this commodity. So, that is why he is a little bit uh, flexible now, uh, he is willing to pay little bit more than the earlier thing. Exactly the similar phenomenon for the supply curve, say suppose as usual we are measuring price in the vertical axis, quantity supplied in the horizontal axis and suppose this was the initial supply curve, say S1. Now, suppose some factor that determines supply we have discussed what are the factors that determine demand, what are the factors that determine supply. So, we know that one essential factor that determines supply is the cost of production or factors of production what is their price. If their price increases, so obviously cost of production will increase, it will have some implication on supply. How? Perhaps supply will shift leftward, say suppose yes, supply curve will shift from S1 position to S2 position. How we can think of or how we can understand that? Okay, look at here. Okay, at some given price level, some given price level, earlier that that supplier or that producer could supply this much of quantity of that product in the market. Now he is able to supply only this much because cost has increased. Okay, you can think the other side. Okay, this is the thing. So to supply or to deliver this much of product, he in earlier he needs only this much of price per unit of that product, right. Then if this much of price say O P P 3 in this case O P 3 price is required per unit of that product initial situation when he will be able to supply the product in the market. Now, since his cost of production has increased, so 
the same amount of commodity say O Q 3 that quantity if he wants to supply okay, he needs little bit more price not O P 3 rather O P 4 right. So, that is the thing that is the thing how or why supply curve is moving leftward or rightward similarly demand curve moving leftward rightward exactly if that things happen the its cost of production uh, or uh, factors of production become cheaper. So, cost of production falls. So, as a result his supply curve will move rightward ok. Exactly same thing it can happen this side if say uh, his income falls right his demand curve will shift leftward when income was increasing demand curve was shifting this way when income falls perhaps demand curve will shift this way. Of course, when I am telling that cost of production increase cost of production falls in this supply case income increases income falls in this demand kind of case right all the cases as usual as always in economics under the ceteris peribus condition only that income factor or only that cost of production factors are changing nothing else is changing ok in that way. In, the, in our last class, uh, so what we are discussing today it is basically some, uh, some extension of what we have discussed in our last class and then we will go to the elasticity concept ok. In our last class we told that equilibrium price how it determines and look at here, look at here equilibrium price in the market and how much quantity of the commodity will be transacted in the market in other words equilibrium quantity in the market both are determined by the market demand market supply force and we have used that market demand curve market supply curve. Although we are discussing here individual demand curve, although we are demand discussing here in individual supply curve of course, similar if similar kind of phenomena happen for all the potential customers in the market automatically after taking the horizontal aggregation of all the individual demand curves you will get the market demand curve. As a result result and market demand curve will also shift rightward or leftward depending on which direction individual demand curves are shifting exactly similar thing happens with the supply curve how individual supply curves are shifting vis a vis accordingly market supply curve will shift. So, that is the phenomenon. Now, uh, can you think of yesterday we told uh, in our earlier lecture we told that under the certain phenomena depending on the certain happening certain peculiarity in the uh, in the atmosphere where that customer belongs may be supply curve uh, shifts may be demand curve shifts may may be both curve shifts right. So, can we think of one phenomena where both curve shifts ok. So, look at here say there is an heat wave and suppose our product is ice cream what we, we were discussing in our last class so, ok. So, there is an heat wave ok. So, as a result suppose demand demand for ice cream was this kind due to heat wave heat wave. So, what will happen perhaps demand curve will shift rightward because it is an heat wave is going on. So, people are desiring to get or consume more ice cream. So, people who were consuming earlier some amount of ice cream they are they are uh, asking for more ice cream because of this uh, huge uh, hot kind of climate. Not only that suppose in the earlier situation people who were not purchasing at all ice cream some of them are also trying to purchase ice cream now. So, as a result entire market demand curve will shift to rightward because there is an uh, atmospheric uh, or atmosphere is very hot now ok. So, heat wave going. So, you know that usually tropical uh, tropical cyclones and all usually happens uh, they follow heat wave kind of thing suddenly the entire big geographical locality is very dry and hot eh? usually some cyclone used to come uh, follow them right. So, suppose heat wave due to heat wave this kind of demand curve shifts rightward and due to cyclone supply curve will also shift after this heat wave say after 2 days cyclone happen. So, what will happen initially supply curve of the of that product this ice cream only we are discussing so since some cyclone came perhaps supply curve will shift to our left toward. Why? Because due to cyclone ok say it is a devastating kind of effect it has right. So, some of the ice cream factories have been destroyed ok. So, as a result uh, ability to supply or the, the, the total total production of ice cream has gone down ok. So, look at here what we are discussing although this we discussed in our last class without telling a specific kind of example or phenomenon that can happen or that can have a simultaneous effect on both market demand and market supply curve right. 
heat wave and within very few days of the heat wave one cyclone is hitting the same locality. Okay. So, demand curve due to heat wave demand curve is uh, shifting rightward due to cyclone supply curve is shifting leftward and as a result and what will be the so after the cyclone this is the supply curve and what will be the result and equilibrium price and quantity before the uh, this phenomenon after the phenomenon you can easily understand from this. Okay. Let me just clarify one more thing, introduce one more concept, this market equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity or the price. So, you know that if this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve, say D is demand curve means C is supply curve as usual we are measuring quantity demanded and quantity supplied both in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis. So, we know that this, is, this will be the equilibrium price of course, O P star unit per unit of the quantity O P star per unit of the quantity of that product okay, price will be P O P star okay, and this much O Q star amount of product will be sold in the market. Those are equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity we have already introduced in our last lecture. This equilibrium price is sometimes also called market clearing price, market clearing price. So, this new terminology you can easily understand by that what we are referring market clearing. So, in the market certain demands are there, certain supply is also there. So, that is that price, that unique price at which all the demand and all the supply are matching each other. So, that market is clear, clear in the sense that there is no excess supply or excess demand or there is no excess supply we told that it is called surplus, excess demand we, we told that it is called alternatively it is also called uh, shortage. Okay. So, the, that is the price uh, at which there is no shortage or no surplus. Okay. So, market is fully clear, all the sub, uh, sellers of the product they are finding uh, customers for their product. So, all the sellers are able to sell their product, all the customers who are looking for the for purchasing some commodity or some quantity of that commodity, they also are satisfied. So, there is no excess neither supply nor demand. Okay. So, sometimes that is called market clearing price. So, that we did not introduce in our last lecture. So, that is why we are introducing that tool. Okay. Let us know. So, so far whatever we have discussed so far, it is about how depending on the movement of market demand curve and market supply curve, equilibrium price is determined and that equilibrium, equilibrium not price, equilibrium price quantity both are determined and due to shift of any of them or both of them simultaneously, how that equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity uh, changes that we have discussed. So, we told that demand curve shift rightward, leftward, supply curve shift rightward, leftward, but if we want to uh, quantify that shift, how much, to what extent that shift happen. So, we have to quantify that to what extent it is happening, to what extent that uh, shifting uh, occurs from one place to another. Right? Say suppose uh, you know uh, that uh, Middle East countries, uh, Middle East countries means uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, those kinds of countries, no, West Asian countries, sometimes those are called Middle East. Okay. And some of the uh, northern African countries like uh, maybe um, Libya or those kinds of countries, those are the uh, major producer of petroleum products globally. Okay. See India, India also is producing petroleum, but depending on the how much petroleum we are consuming India as a country, entire country, very negligible fraction of that only we can produce on ourselves. So, major portion of our petrol consumption or consumption of petroleum products we are importing, we are importing from mostly those countries. Okay. This is not true for India alone, this is true for most of the countries in the world. These uh, uh, a group of countries, uh, 8 9 countries are there, those are called OPEC, we will discuss OPEC sometime later. Okay. Those are basically the major uh, supplier of petroleum products worldwide. Okay. Now, suppose for some reason say suppose uh, there is an uh, there is a uh, war kind of situation in Middle East countries, right. So, political instability is there. So, that if there is a some political instability in some of the countries of this petroleum producer or petroleum exporting countries, 
that kind of situation arises, what will happen? Perhaps production of petroleum product right, will be hampered. As a result, supply of the petroleum product globally will be affected. Okay. So, supply will fall. Okay. So, suppose this was the global demand, initially supply was there. So, D initially supply was there due to some reason so supply is this kind of thing. So, we can understand easily although initially this was the price say O P star was the oh, okay, okay, O P star P star may be okay. So, suppose initially this was the O P star okay, amount of price per unit of petroleum product before this kind of uh, political unrest uh, occurs there. Okay. So, after that what will happen? The supply curve moves leftward, okay. supply is hampered, okay. so price is increasing to a say O P 1 star or initially P 1 O P 1 star and later O P 2 star. Okay. So, we know that price will increase. Now, the question is to what extent it will increase right? or suppose if price increases, okay, so to what extent uh, quantity supplied or quantity demanded will affect. Okay. So, if we want to capture that or we want to uh, quantify that change, okay. so how we can do that? Okay. So, we have one important concept called elasticity, elasticity. Okay. This elasticity, this terminology is used when we want to capture the responsiveness or to some extent as I told, we want to capture the change or we want to quantify the change okay? that is called elasticity. Let us first discuss elasticity related to demand and then we will come to elasticity related to supply also. So, elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply we will discuss. Okay? Now, we are, we are telling that uh, since we are trying to quantify here as you can remember we introduced when we introduced what are the factors that determine demand we introduced 5, 6 different factors and while we introduced we told that 3 of those factors are very easy to quantify or those are directly quantifiable kind of factors. What are those quantifiable factors? Of course, the price of that commodity which determine its uh, demand okay, or quantity demanded that. Okay. Of course, price of the related commodities, of course, income of the customer those three factors which are easily uh, those are quantifiable factors and those quantifiable factors each of them have some kind of implication over the demand. right? So, depending on the what factor demand is changing or quantity demanded is changing accordingly we will we will bring three different terminologies. So, that terminology itself will tell that under the satellite's previous condition only that factor is changing. Okay. So, when okay, 1, 2, 3, 3 alternative concepts we are bringing of elasticity of demand here because 3 quantifiable factors are there. You can remember depending on each of these 3 quantifiable factors and changing in the, those factors vis a vis the quantity demanded, we have, we have, we have uh, classified uh, the commodities or nature of the commodities into two groups no normal commodity normal good versus inferior good ordinary good versus given good substitute commodity which is complementary commodity if you can remember right exactly those three quantifiable factors we are considering here right and other factors which are very difficult to quantify those we are not bringing any concepts or those are we are not bringing into the elasticity concept so we can tell accordingly or we can get accordingly three elasticity of demand concept one is called price elasticity of demand price elasticity of demand sometimes this price elasticity of demand sometimes is called own price elasticity also why it is own price i am coming it will be very easy cross price elasticity of demand cross price elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand. So, you understand when this own price is coming because this cross price concept, 
own price means when the commodities quantity demanded is changing due to change its own price that is called price elasticity of demand or more specifically or more clarificatory way it is called own price elasticity of demand. We know that cost price elasticity means price of the related commodities like tea and coffee, coffee and milk kind of those kinds of commodities we have introduced right. So, means the quantity demanded my quantity demanded or customers quantity demanded of tea depends on price of the coffee. Okay. or customers uh, quantity demanded of coffee depends on price of the milk and so on because this coffee and milk, tea and coffee they are somewhere related when we are telling tea and coffee you can understand that they are substitute to each other. When we are telling coffee and milk you can easily understand that they are complement to each other like that. So, accordingly since one commodity's price determines the quantity demanded of the other commodity. So, that is why it is called cost price elasticity of demand, elasticity of demand, but due to cost price, other commodities price, other commodity means of course, other related commodity price okay, in that, that way. And this is called income elasticity. So, uh, due to change in income, what is the quantity demanded or change in the quantity demanded. Okay. Now, what is the definition of elasticity? So, this way we can bring three terminologies the elasticity of demand own price elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand. Okay. How we define that? What is the definition of that elasticity? That is basically a ratio. Okay. So, elasticity let us discuss that own price elasticity. So, I am telling E p elasticity capital E for elasticity and P for own price in that sense price. Okay. Elasticity price elasticity of demand this is percentage change in quantity demanded will be the numerator due to percentage change in price or own price of that commodity. That ratio will be called own price elasticity of demand. So, due to own price change look at here own price change is the new uh, denominator. So, due to own price change how quantity demanded is going to change. Okay. So, that is called own price elasticity of demand percentage change. So, if we understand that own price elasticity of demand's definition it is very easy to understand what will be elasticity of C p. I am writing E C p means elasticity of cross price elasticity of demand cross price CP that elasticity of demand. So, definitely that will be numerator will be the same thing percentage change in quantity demanded in quantity demanded due to percentage change in price of the related commodity related good or commodity no uh, substitute good or complement good like that okay coffee's percentage change in coffee's quantity demanded due to percentage change in price of tea not price of coffee if it is price of coffee here will come coffee's elasticity uh, own price elasticity of demand right so here percentage change in if the percentage change in quantity demanded of tea in the numerator it should be denominator either coffee or maybe some coffee when we are telling we are bringing the substitute commodity it can be uh, milk also price of milk also that kind of thing some related commodity that is maybe uh, as a complementary commodity like that right. So, one commodity is quantity de percentage change in quantity demanded in the numerator other commodity other related commodities price a uh, percentage change in price okay. that is that cross price elasticity of demand and similarly elasticity of demand due to income income elasticity of demand. So, that will be exactly the same thing numerator will be the same thing percentage change in quantity demanded of one commodity okay, demanded by percentage change in income. So, you can understand easily now why this this 
elasticity is called own price elasticity, this elasticity is called cross price elasticity and this elasticity is called income elasticity. It is very easy because this terminology is coming according to which factor is appearing there in the denominator and all the three cases numerator is the same percentage change in quantity demanded of a commodity okay. and denominator is changing and accordingly three different denominators are there. So, accordingly three different elasticity of demand concept we are. Now, the question so you can understand easily a commodity say suppose price elasticity of demand for the T. Okay. So, its numerator is percentage change in quantity demanded in T of some consumers may be me okay. and denominator is percentage change in price of that T. Right. So, you can easily understand this elasticity concept, okay. it is capturing how much my behavior of T consumption is responsive to its own price. So, that is why we are claiming through this elasticity concept, we are trying to capture responsiveness of the behavior of the person. Okay. Similarly, say suppose cost price elasticity of T due to price of say coffee. Okay. So, percentage numerator is percentage change in quantity demanded of T may be for me vis a vis or denominator will be due to percentage change in price of coffee. Right. So, exactly in the same way this will capture the responsiveness of my quantity demanded of consumption of T, how much it is responsive to the change in price of coffee, some related commodity, right? Exactly same way, say income elasticity that percentage change in my consumption of say T, uh, how much responsive due to percentage change in income. Okay. So, any this kind of three elasticity of demand concept what we introduced here, they are trying to capture uh, responsiveness of a consumer's quantity consumption behavior of a commodity due to one of the three quantifiable factors that have some implication that influence that determine quantity demanded or demand sometimes. Okay. Now, since percentage change and percentage change both percentage changes are in the numerator and denominator, how we can quantify that or what could be their uh, formula? Basically, suppose we are denoting quantity Q d, uh, Q d is used to denote quantity demanded and price is denoted uh, is used to change or is used to measure uh, P is P is measure uh, P is used to measure price. Right. CP is used to measure cost price or price of the related commodity and I is used to measure income. Okay. So, definitely in own price elasticity of demand in our usual notation EP that must be delta Q D by Q D delta Q D by Q D into 100 that is the percentage change. Okay. This delta Q D means how much change happens in quantity demanded delta Q D. Say suppose initially uh, this was Q D 0 amount initial quantity demanded before the change in price and after change in price suppose this is Q D 1 that is the new quantity demanded. So, definitely then Q D 1 minus Q D 0 that we are denoting as delta Q D. Okay. Delta means increment or change increment it may be falling also negative increment kind of thing. Okay. So, that change in quantity demanded that we are denoted by delta okay. that is the usual way to denote delta. Okay. So, delta Q D by Q D into 100 is the percentage change in quantity demanded exactly same way delta P by P into 100 that is the percentage change in price. So, this will be the own price elasticity of demand exactly the same way E cross price that will be delta Q D by Q D ah, not Q delta denominator should not be delta 
ok q d into 100 ok by delta C p by C p into 100 ok. Exactly in elasticity of demand income elasticity rate of demand will be delta q d by q d look numerator is always the same all the three cases right? this will be delta income i by i into 100. So, both denominator and numerator you can cancel out 100 100. So, this will result will be delta q d by q d into p by delta p this thing if you this thing if you simplify you will land here exactly the same way this thing if you simplify you will land here delta q d by c p ok into delta q d by q d into c p by delta c p ok exactly same way if you simplify that you will land here this will be delta q d by q d into i by delta i. So, these are the elasticity of demand or three alternative concepts of elasticity of demand. Now, we will discuss we will discuss exclusively or quite exhaustively one price elasticity of demand and we will not discuss the two other concepts, but in the same way if you proceed you can do that easily. So, one of them or uh, discussion of one of them is quite exhaustive way is required and from that you can easily do the subsequent thing if you wish right. So, we will we will now go to uh, discuss that how we can measure own price elasticity of demand.